Two semifinal games on this Saturday in Philadelphia about to get started. Matty Palum is our head official. Naso and Chase Mullins, the North Carolina transfer, and Duke wins the open faceoff. The Blue Devils on offense led by one of the most potent attacks in the country, Andrew McAdory, two and white carries, streaking through the cage, misses wide, and he was in the crease. It'll be Penn State ball. It's McAdory, the aforementioned O'Neal, and Dyson Williams, an ace finisher on the inside for playoff. You mentioned Jack Posey, senior captain, All-American, injured his leg in the quarterfinal win against Army for Penn State. He was on crutches yesterday. And Duke, after the goal, wins the faceoff. Posey was the guy who was going to draw that O'Neill assignment, and everybody would have been in their places. But now, everyone's got to bump. Long down the stretch. Multiple goals in four of his previous five games. A Penn State team that in 2019 reached championship weekend for the first time here in Philadelphia. They were ambushed in the first quarter by Yale as we get a faceoff violation against Penn State. 2020 Penn State goes into the season as the preseason number one. COVID hits. And then the program over the next two years. Offense, Matt Danowski, offensive coordinator at Duke, said, we need to press the seams. That is, draw two men. Balsamo does that. He sniffs that out, and he's between the two defenders and senses that there's not sufficient contact there, and he takes it to pay dirt. It's his first goal of this NCAA tournament, and Duke, four for four on faceoffs. And this is where Duke can be dangerous. They can play make it, take it because of Jake Naso at the X. From up top, sweeping with an absolute cannon of a shot. So Duke is concerned about his ability to stretch. How does he counter? With the pass. Winkoff to TJ Malone. Kevin Winkoff, a 70 goal scorer in his career at Binghamton. Jeff Tambroni had resisted the transfer portal the last few years when other teams were diving in, he changed his MO this offseason. Yeah, right, let's yeah. go. Like, when, like when Maryland and Rutgers are stomping on you with all, a lineup of transfers, uh, dial up the portal. First faceoff win for Penn State. If you're watching this game, you get a sense of, of what the identity of this Penn State team is. It's their grit. It's their competitiveness. They take care of the year when Penn State had a litany of injuries on offense and the assist again, Quint, by Winkoff, who now has three. Brent Fleck, a legacy. Down. His mom, three aunts, and two uncles all went to Penn State. Duke in round one survived Dela Delaware. And then in the quarterfinals, vaporized Michigan. Penn State needed a comeback to beat Princeton in round one. Down 7-1 in that game. Knocked off Army, outlasting the Black Knights in Annapolis last week. I think this is... Gave him that five, six-yard cushion when he was dodging. Good night, six goals. So from everything we've seen, Clark, the hurdles for Penn State in this game are face-offs and covering O'Neal. Mullins getting help from the wing. And Mark Sickler, 32 in blue. Sickler playing as a two-way midi this year, an offensive midi for the last two years. How fast that ball's on top of him. The one thing Penn State has this weekend, Philadelphia, the home to a very large Penn State alumni base. They might be the underdog, but they're the home team as well. Tyler Carpenter to McAdory. Can Duke turn chaos into opportunity? 
O'Neal left hand free does it again more than three quarters of his goals are unassisted Kark sometimes it's as simple as give the ball to 34 and tell him go look from a size speed skill and strength standpoint and I'm not saying he's the goat Gary Gate and I never will but I haven't seen someone this big fast and strong with the skill and the snap of the release like this this is crazy this is unguardable he's too big he's too fast he's too strong and he's too accurate of a shooter Quint that's 90 plus on the run while being covered okay he's the fastest Duke player ever to 100 goals when he was in eighth grade he verbaled Penn State. Okay, this was a guy, I remember watching highlights of him. We covered him in the World Series of Lacrosse, actually, in Denver. Joe Beninati, when he was 13, I remember looking at him like, oh my gosh, what is this? Well, he's gotten faster, actually. He was always a monster. He was always mammoth. But he's gotten faster and quicker. And man, he has worked on his game. He's something else. And I think he's picking this tournament this year to say, hey, I've arrived big time. Two years ago, the ACC Freshman of the Year, an All-American last season. Problems. Perfection of that shot. I mean, that's within a ball or two of that offside low post. We'll see him next week for the Whip Snakes, third round pick in the PLL draft. Another faceoff won by Duke. Just off the mark. Playmaker down the stretch on that second midfield unit. And it should. When you have the ball in your stick and you're behind the cage like TJ Malone, you're the quarterback, then you're asked for the first time to play an off ball midfield type role. The things change. O'Neill Dyson Williams, Fessian with his biggest save of the game. 51 rarely. Coach at a high school level, he comes in, he goes, I know who your good players are. I want your toughest guys. And that's the identity of this team. Tell you what, these guys are not flinching. They're not going to back down. We saw them yesterday in practice, too, gentlemen. Like, there's no flinching in this team. This is a tough team that trains as hard, if not harder, than any team in the country. Kark, I think the two challenges after that first quarter finish this weekend, Kark, too. How this turf plays. Yesterday, a lot of the guys were talking how there was very little bounce off the surface. Bounce shots might be a no go. They won't be a go at all. You saw O'Neal there. Sometimes he actually bounces for that opposite pipe. Just a lower type shot. But when you defend... His Penn State career checkered by injuries. Last year he had a hamstring. He was dealing with immense pain in his shins. He found out he had compartment syndrome. It's a painful condition where there's too much pressure within the muscles. They actually had to cut his legs open to alleviate the pressure. He's come back this year. And he's been one of the top goal scorers in the Big Ten. Q, Penn State at full strength was a massive underdog in this game. Jack Trainer not close to 100%. The best defender, Jack Posey, out. They're still toe-to-toe -to -toe with Duke. Still a lot of time left, but they have yet to back down. You look at the stat sheet, Duke, big advantage. Shots, shots on goals. They have not turned it over much, but Penn State has managed to keep this close. And we get a face-off violation on Penn State. That is their second of the half, so when his eyes up and his body comes up and then boom, he yanks it down and you see it buckles the goaltender. How do you play that, Q? I, I, that, I, I mean, <laughs> that says it all. Most of the time when guys jump, take jump shots, they do change levels. You rarely see a jump shot, high to high shot. Penn State, unsettled, Malone, doorstep, dunk. To a little numerical advantage. Beautiful pinpoint passing. A logistical symphony. 
for the Lions. Quint, you've been to Jeff Tambroni's practices in the offseason. I have, too, when we're covering college football. A staple of that is ball movement and transition. And that was just beautiful offense. Starting to close the gap on faceoffs. It's now 9 9. Doubtful that they would play five on five and shut O'Neill. Yeah, and then that's what I talked to Car talked to Coach about yesterday. You lose your best defender, Jack Posey. What can you do in a week? The tendency is to want to overcoach it. And, and coach is staying true to this team's identity and who they are defensively. Mullins wins the faceoff to begin the third quarter. And that, Penn State will go on the offensive first. That's the shocker right now. Penn State is up, I believe, 10 to 9 in faceoffs. John Donowski, though, telling us yesterday, Meso, someone who generally gets better as the game goes along. He dodged to the dirt. You mentioned Vinny Sombrato. Vinny played on four U.S. national teams after a standout career at Hofstra. That was his uncle. Scored that game-winning goal in the Dome in an overtime game against Syria. Of that shot in the release that it wasn't too far away from his body allowed him to stick it. Malone yesterday described his Penn State career as a sandwich with great bread and expired meat. <laughs> he said championship weekend as a freshman in 2019, then injuries took a toll. You had the COVID year. He had two torn labrums and a sports hernia that required surgery. Initially, that injury was misdiagnosed as a groin pull. So in 2020, freshman in 2019, then injuries took a toll. You had the COVID year. He had two torn labrums and a sports hernia that required surgery. Initially, that injury was misdiagnosed as a groin pull. So in 2021, he didn't practice. He played in the games. He wasn't himself. Then he saw a hip specialist, and they said, hey, this is more than a groin pull. Missed all of last year. He came back, Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year, and his team at championship weekend. And his career arc kind of parallels Pat Spencer, former star for Loyal. He was a late bloomer out of high school. Five foot four as a 16-year-old. Okay, he was headed to Amherst. And his coach at Haverford begged Jeff Tambroni. He said, take a look at him. And Tambo picked him up super late in the process. He was committed to Penn State after his senior year of high school. Chance here for Tommy Schilling. And Duke goes up three again. Schilling plays this perfectly. Watch 31 in the inside. A step here, a step there. Keeps him high enough in front of the crease not to lose his angle. And it's the faith in a ball movement offense, Quinn, that he knows he's going to get it. Watch 31 inside. A step here, a step there to stay high on the crease to keep that angle. No second slide, and you see Penn State's defense. After this ball goes in the net and they get together in their huddle, it's more like a, an autopsy report. What happened, guys? What happened? And all of a sudden, Duke's getting goals from multiple guys. Shelling's got two, Balsamo's got two, Ledman's got two, O'Neill's got, got three. At Cark, you see the value of Jake Naso staying out there on offense, getting the assist. A lot like Petey LaSala, which we'll see in game two for Virginia. They stay on the field, but also create a lot of five on fives. But Naso's a warrior like LaSala. He's taken all but about 30 faceoffs the entire season. And ACC play took every single one other than two. Naso, a first team All American. Mark, Mark. 
Winkoff. And I love it, Haverford and East. Freshmen and sophomores against the wall. Juniors and seniors, you actually get to shoot on the goal. <laughs> <laughs> you got to earn it. Nasa wins the faceoff. Sweeney Jones it loose. Penn State the other way. Quickly ahead to Winkoff. Five assists today for Winkoff. He had 13 in what? And he's the last four Penn State goals. Three goals, and he assisted on the last one. Ball ends into Naso in a tangled knot. It comes to Duke and to Jack Gray. Finally, now a possession for Duke. You're going to get a goalie like Frassian. Six different goal scorers for Duke. Naso off the faceoff win. That's such a deceptive shot, Anish. It's a, it's a nuanced and, and subtle shot because so many players crisscross that to the far post. And as a goalie, your, your weight shifts, you're thinking too much, you don't see the ball out of the pocket. Shooter, the full follow through gets the stick across your body. In those last two shots, you didn't see that. Naso wins the faceoff for Duke. Accelerates downhill. Naso all the way! His sixth of the season. 13 11 Duke. Yesterday at practice. Naso's drilling on, on the side like all Fogos do. They're like kickers. I point to him and I ask John Danowski, what's most improved? He said Jake has become a real lacrosse player. His handling, ground ball acumen, the passing, the understanding where the offense can be is that pegs our goal cam. Naso bags. It's a key goal in this game. Seeing that more and more now with face-off guys. Ever since the rule change a couple years ago, the players have to be A, more athletic, and way more skilled with the ball. Whether it's Naso, Petey LaSalle, those are the two top goal scorers in Sir. championship weekend from that position. Sir. The response by Duke came four seconds after the Penn State goal. Naso wins this one back. And now Duke with a chance at the final 25 seconds of quarter number three. A self made player. He wakes up early in the morning and runs with TJ Malone, spends countless of hours against the wall working on his stick skills. He's hard nosed, aggressive. He's been ruthless on the ball, and now all he can do is try to lead from the bench. In this tournament, both teams have... Blue superstar this afternoon with the home crowd behind his back. T.J. Malone as a freshman was an understudy in many ways to Grant Ament, the greatest player in Penn State history, whose passing skills were uncanny. Those two still talk multiple times a week, trading ideas on strategy. Game planning, fundamentals. I could. And Kark, one of Duke's biggest strengths this weekend, it's their depth. It is. It's incredible when you think about the upgrade at short stick defensive midi using four high end guys. I mean, that's what Maryland did a season ago, and it propelled them to a national championship. All the talk was about their offense, but the depth at that short stick defensive midfield position. And when you could go deep, Duke, I was just in their huddle. He said, they cannot stop us, whether they run zone or run man. And if they're in man, they're looking for some exchanges from the crease area to pop those guys on the outside. The hot guy, they're going to move that guy around so their slides off for Penn State. Face-offs tilting in Duke's direction. They've won the last five. Yeah. Yeah. It 
It's Jake Miso. Don't call him a Fogo. 15-14 Duke. A three-point afternoon for Naso. Two goals and an assist. Step down City. Look at him walk back to the dot. You talk about body language. Like, I'm the man. Look at him. Look at him strut back to that dot. Look at him time this up. The catch. Crow hop. Three-quarter overhand bouncer. He actually gets this ball to hum. Gets this ball to kick enough over the stick. Just a gorgeous shot from about 11 yards. Able to eye it up, follow through, celebrate to the bench. Second goal today, the 15th of his career. Hudson Bond and Naso. Penn State finally wins a draw. And they might turn it over. Aldridge able to salvage the possession. They've got to play it back. And Penn State has to get it across midfield before that shot clock hits 60. Points in round one. Naso wins another face-off for Duke. It's the seventh tie of the game. Five minutes to go. Clark when these championship weekend matchups from those face-off wins. Two goals and an assist. Mullins out there for Penn State. Gotta be straight, boys. Gotta be straight. Down. Mullins topples over Naso. And out of the clouded wrath of the crowd, it's Jake Naso. Duke ball to begin overtime. Let's see if Duke elects to use its timeout.